everyone welcome back to homegrown passion today's video i'm going to take you on some of the daily chores i need to do especially with these guys they take up a lot of my time and also in the greenhouse which i could work 10 or 12 hours a day but i don't because i want to be outside and do my other chores so stay tuned and come along my journey with me and see what i do Well, this morning I was feeding my chickens and I always come over and check on the water trough and I notice it's getting really nasty. These guys like to eat their grain and their hay, come over here, get a big drink of water and drop all their food out of their mouth and it just gets really gross. So I end up cleaning it like every week, week and a half, but it's really easy to do. So let me show you how we clean out the cow water trough. To begin cleaning out the water trough, I need to turn off the water because we have an automatic float on the trough, which is really nice because when the cows drink, it just automatically fills it up. And when it's filled, it turns itself off. So I don't have to worry about overflowing or coming out and checking to make sure they have water. But before I even do anything else, I need to turn off the fence. I hate getting hit by it. So I'm gonna go run up to the shop and turn that off. First thing I need to do is turn off the electric fence. This is a really powerful fencer. We got it because we have George the Bull and I've hit it a couple times and it does not feel good and I'm such a klutz and leaning over to clean out the trough. I will know I'll end up hitting it. So we put it on a little surge protector so I don't climb up anywhere to unplug it and just turn it off and let's go clean out the uh, water trough. The first thing I need to do is turn on the faucet on the bottom and get the trough drained out which is really nice because I don't have to tip it over because it's a pain to tip over when it's full. It's really heavy. So I'll go ahead and get this turned on. There we go. And it's going to take a couple minutes to drain out. So while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and check their feeder. love the summertime when it's so nice and dry going in the pastures. I don't have to worry about getting all muddy. So let's get this checked out. I like to shut the gate because the wind keeps blowing it open. And you never know. Sometimes they like to come running over here. So go down and check their feeder. Gotta watch out for cow pies. Oh, good. Looks good. We have it closed down quite a bit so they don't eat too much at once and get bloated. So yeah, that looks really good. Let me check the other side. Yep, looks good. And get their grain. So let me tell you about how a cow feeder works. It's actually called a cow stuffer. And we fill it up, I think there's four tons of grain in here. We had it delivered about a month ago and we have it dialed down because there's little plates in there that you can lift up and down to regulate how much grain can come out because they lick it with their tongue and that's how it gets out onto the little trough area. And it just, you know, it's a self feeder so they eat when they feel like it and usually in the evening and the uh, mornings when it's nice and cool is when they like to eat. And it's just a really good way to keep them satisfied all day long. So we order our feed from a local feed mill. It's all non-GMO corn. It's about a 13% protein and it has oats and the corn and molasses so it smells really good and it also has all the vitamins and minerals that the cattle need to grow so i have five head in this lot and you can tell they're herefords i love my herefords they're such a docile breed tried to do angus a few years back and they were too crazy for me so the herefords easy to work around walk around don't have to worry about them attacking you and if you have to move them in a trailer they load up really nice and easy so nothing better than a hereford so there's george the bull He's been with us for six years now. He's had lots of babies for us. He is such a docile bull that even when the babies are born, he can stay out there with the cows. He doesn't attack anybody. He's just really easy going. He did get out a couple times on me, get a bucket of food and he'll follow you anywhere. Now the fun part is scrubbing down the trough. I always like to do it before all the water gets out of there so I can scrub up the sides and get any algae off, any debris, any bugs, leaves. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all scrubbed up and then we'll dump it over.
Okay, I got the trough brushed out, cleaned out, all the leaves out of it. Next thing I need to do is just turn the water back on, and luckily I don't have to stand here and watch it. It'll fill up and the trough or the float will turn it off. If these guys were thirsty and I turn it back on, I'd have to stay here because if it starts filling up with water, they all five of them will get their heads in there and tip the whole thing over and break it. So luckily they're out there playing out in the field, so I can just turn it on and I'm done. Okay, okay so got to shut off right here by the float. Turn it on. There you go. Make sure the hose adjusted correctly. So if anybody gets close to it, they don't get their hoof caught in it. So, looks like it's going to fill up fine, so go hang my brush up for next time. So even though I have a float on the water trough, I'm still going to come back out here in a couple hours just to make sure it's not overflowing because a couple times the floats got stuck and come out and water's going everywhere. So it's pretty easy to clean the trough out and I'm probably going to have to do it with the leaves falling like they are probably every couple days. And it just makes me feel good that the cows have fresh, clean water. I'm here in the high tunnel harvesting some of my Amish paste tomatoes. Like I said in the last video I did, I did um, sun-dried tomatoes because I didn't have enough to make some sauce. Well, these guys are all coming on board really quickly. And I think I'm definitely going to have enough to make a couple big jars of sauce. Hopefully I get a couple gallons put up for this winter time. But these guys are doing pretty good. Like I said, they're on the strawberry formula, so they're not as big as they would be if they were on the regular paste tomato or the regular tomato formula. But they're nice size, can't complain. And you know, out here in the high tunnel, I usually get white flies on these guys. And I see a few, but not like normal. So that's pretty good. Maybe because we're kind of in a drought condition, the bugs aren't as bad. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep harvesting. Get all the ripe ones off the plants here. I did have a couple that had blossom end rot on them. You can still use them, just cut off the ends. Look how pretty. This is a great haul. Wow, look at all those tomatoes. Well, harvesting peppers here. I got them all off the lower areas I could reach. Now I got to get the ladder and get the top ones. These peppers are really out of control. I should say not the peppers, but the pepper plants. Whoops. I got to go up on the stool here. And these guys are way above my head. And I probably should have kept trimming them back a little bit and not so many leaves. But it's kind of cool watching them grow. But I am getting some really nice peppers in my CSA program. Like I said, they called and asked if I could bring them some peppers tomorrow. So I better get harvesting for them. Oops. And there's a ton of red ones up here. But I think next time I do pepper plants, which I'll probably redo them next year, is I am going to keep them trimmed up a little bit more so they're not so big and bushy and try to go to the two or three stems. So then I'll get even bigger peppers than this because I do get quite a few small ones. But you know, when I'm someone at the farm market, so many people love the small ones to make stuffed peppers. They think it, they said it works a lot better. You don't get so much um, the meat and the uh, rice in the middle of it. You get a pepper with each of the bites. So I guess you, it depends on what you want to do with them or what size you want, but I think they're still pretty cool. Wow, I can't believe how many are up here. And sometimes you get funky shaped ones like this guy. I'll keep this guy for me. Still tastes good, just looks funny. And one more. Nope, oh, take that back. Here's another little one. I better get him off. 
Because, you know, if you don't get all the peppers off, it won't keep producing. Okay, time to move the ladder down. I think I see one up there. Yeah, maybe not. No, I think that's about it for all the tall ones, so... Well, I'll keep going around to make sure I don't have any more in here. So last Saturday was my first farm market and I sold my fancy green beans, that's what I call them, and they went over huge. I was sold out of them in about an hour. I was able to pick five pounds out of just ten buckets for the first harvest, and usually the first harvest you don't get that much, and these guys have really produced a lot. And now they are absolutely going crazy. Once you start harvesting them, they just keep putting out more and more flowers. And look at how beautiful these beans are. Nice and long, no, not bumpy, no marks on them. They're just perfect. Everybody loves to eat these guys raw. But I don't have my market for a few days, so I'm going to pick quite a few of them and put them up as dilly beans, which is a spicy green bean that you can. And it's really good in different types of drinks, like Bloody Marys and um, just whatever else you want to put it in. But they're really tasty, nice and spicy, like I said. So I'm going to keep harvesting these guys, and let's see how many pounds I get. Well, I was hoping I didn't have to use my ladder, but I have to. These guys are already up here. There we go. Wow. They like to hide behind the, uh, I'll just put a few back there. I don't think I can reach them. I have to move my ladder again. But that's okay. Yeah, I'm gonna move my ladder closer so I can go to those guys. Cucumber plants are in the way. I'm in the jungle. You probably noticed that I'm using clippers. I don't want to hurt my plants and pull on them and break off branches because those are potentials for more beans. So it's better to take your time, clip them off, and get multiple harvests. Ooh, there's a couple nice ones. Well, with the way the light's fading, I don't think I'm going to get this done tonight. So I'm going to keep on going until it gets dark and probably finish it up in the morning, and then we'll come back and see how many I got. Well, as you can see, I got my harvesting done before it got dark. Went a lot faster than I anticipated, which is nice. And I weighed them out, and I have another five pounds. Like I said, I had five pounds last week for my first harvest, but this was only three days in between harvest, and I got another five. So these guys are going to go crazy. I probably... And they get another six or seven pounds in three days. So look how beautiful those guys are. So go put these up for us. Well, I hope you guys liked today's video. I wanted to show you some of the different chores I need to do on a daily basis. It's kind of fun. And I just want to give you guys a different perspective of what goes on in Bradwood Farm. And I'm going to keep doing that in the future videos because I want you guys to get the whole picture of everything that we do here. It's just not about the greenhouse. It's about homesteading. It's about putting up food. It's about taking care of my animals. And I hope you guys enjoy this. So I think I'm going to end the video here. And like always, please leave me questions, comments, and suggestions down below. And we'll see you guys next time.